things I wanted to talk about today are how to get started in homesteading and self-sufficiency. You can't really just jump in and expect things to work. It just, it does not work that way. And uh, so I wanted to do this series kind of like some tips. How I got started, um, not only in homesteading and self-sufficiency, oh, there's some light, but uh, basically how to become debt-free in about six years. It's taken me, you know, it could take you longer, it could take you shorter. Um, but when I started, I had a plan, and that plan is what is crucial. And let me kind of back you up to the beginning, um, and, and hopefully that'll help you. So, I bought property, a house with some land, with the intentions of eventually homesteading and becoming self-sufficient and also becoming debt-free. And when I bought the land, it was never a homestead before. It was actually a vacation home. The guy had owned it for 20 years. It's on a lake. And basically, they come out and spend a weekend or two a year. And for the most time, it was not lived in. And they mowed the grass, and that's really about all they really ever did. And actually, according to some of the neighbors, they didn't really mow the grass that often either. But um, that's neither here nor there. So, things that I think are crucial to allowing me to get to where I'm at in such a quick manner are that first, when I bought the house, I did not do anything at all for the first year. And that was an intentional because I wanted to walk the property and keep an eye on what was in bloom and what I was seeing for the first year because it changes as the seasons change, you know, everything else changes also. And I was trying to also put together an idea of like where I wanted to have chicken coop and where I wanted to have goats and where I was going to put rabbits and where the garden was going to be at and, you know, all these things. And my original plans had to change because during that first year, I found like nut trees that had I just acted on a whim and did what I wanted to do from the start without taking that year break and paying attention, I would have cut down nut trees that are a natural source of, you know, food. I would have cut down wild blueberries and blackberries that are also a source of food. You know, I probably get a gallon or more of blueberries and blackberries from the wild plants, I'm not counting what I've planted myself. In the nuts, and there were some fruit trees, three different uh, mulberry trees that, you know, had I had I done my plan. Originally, without knowing they were there, I probably would have cut them down because they just look like trees that weren't doing very well. And also, um, I found two plums up up close to the mailbox that really looked like they were dead until till that first spring when they come to life. And I was like, oh, that's something growing on there. And as time went on, I realized it was a plum, a, a natural wild plum tree. An American plum so anyways that's what I did I took one year and I didn't do anything I just observed observed the property I would take walks at least once a week sometimes almost every day I would just take a walk and I take a piece of paper and I kind of like sketched out the property and when I find places I would mark it on my paper and Literally, it got to be so much that I started taking a GPS and dropping waypoints be, just so that I could find, hey, there were nuts on the ground here. Where's the nut tree at? <laughs> you know, go back and look. Go back and find the nut tree. And, uh, you know, that kind of helped a lot. And I'm glad I did that because it totally changed my original layout of the property. And... It allowed me to plan where to put the rabbit hutch without destroying any natural food or where to put the chicken coop or where to put the goats or, you know, where to put the garden, where to put the orchard, all that stuff. Once I knew what was here naturally that was edible, then I could plan around that without destroying it. 
All right, so that's the first tip. Live on your land for a year and observe it through all the seasons. That's the first tip. The second tip I want to talk about is have a game plan. And basically what I did was I kind of knew what I wanted. And I'm just like everybody else. I'm kind of impatient at times and I want everything yesterday. But homesteading is expensive. So you need to have a plan and a budget for homesteading. Um, I'll get it. You know, we're obviously going to talk about that, but there's going to be more things too. Um, so I started with a spreadsheet and I started with simple stuff like where am I going to put the garden? I thought the garden was pretty important right off the bat. That was one of the first things I did. And then right after that was chickens. And really knowing what I know now, I probably would have went with rabbits next instead of the chickens. But it don't matter. Um, to kind of touch on why that happened, though, is pound for pound, when you look at the cost to raise rabbits and the food they eat before they're ready to harvest is much less so than what it is for a chicken so chickens you got to have like six months before they even start laying eggs where rabbits you know you can harvest them after a few weeks after they're born they don't really eat a lot as much or you know not as much as chickens they're easier to maintain and pound for pound the rabbits beat chickens every time and i'm still a firm believer in that five or six years now on the homestead uh, i'm a firm believer that i probably you know, doing it over again, I would have got rabbits before I got chickens. All right, so um, having a plan. What I did was I created a spreadsheet, and I put down goals for each year, and then I estimated what each one of those goals would cost me to do. And I'm going to tell you right now, homesteading is not cheap. Like, unless you bought an existing homestead, if you're starting from, like I did, a you're homesteading from scratch, which means there wasn't a chicken coop on the property, there wasn't goat barns there wasn't rabbit hutches none of that stuff so you're starting from scratch let me give you some figures and these aren't exact you know if you want the exact figures i'll tell you but these are just estimates of what i know to be true it cost me about twenty four hundred dollars for me to build my chicken coop and run by myself that's what it cost me in materials and you know, time was you know quite a bit of time it was it was actually spread out over a month because um, it rained almost every day that month. So I would get an hour or two, you know, more work done every day over a month. But, you know, if if I was going to build it and have a really good solid weather week, it probably would have taken me four or five, maybe six days to build it. The rabbit hutch cost me about $300 to build. So another reason why I would have started with rabbits, way cheaper to get started. A rabbit hutch is way cheaper to build than a chicken coop is. And... Um, and, and they produce more faster. So uh, that's another reason why I would have started with the rabbits. The goats. The goat is surprising how much it's cost. I've got two of the three sections of the goat barn done. And the goat, the fencing, the goat barn that I've got done already, the fencing and the goats have cost me almost $8,000 now. $8,000 five goats um you know so all of that's expensive i think the rabbits so the rabbit hutch you know three hundred dollars and then the rabbits i paid about a hundred dollars for three rabbits give or take i don't remember the exact so i had four hundred dollars in the rabbits and the the first chickens that i got the chicken coop and run cost me twenty four hundred dollars I didn't pay anything for the chickens. So you're looking at $400 versus $2,400. Plus, I had to feed them chickens for six months before I ever got the first egg, where the rabbits only had to feed for two months, and I already had nine rabbits ready to go in the freezer. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of how that worked. Um, the garden, um, I, I've probably got four or $5,000 in my raised bed garden. And, you know, materials cost money, soil amendments cost money, the fence cost money to keep out the deer, all that stuff costs money. So what I did, though, was instead of doing it all at once, I broke it down into every year I created a budget. You know, what I had income wise, what my bills cost, what was left over, how much of that that I was going to put into the homestead part and then 
another section of that I put into paying off excess debt because I was working on multiple goals. I wanted to homestead. That was one goal. I also wanted to be debt free within a certain amount of time. That was a second goal. And then I had all these projects to do around the homestead to get, you know, all this stuff done without getting deeper in debt. So that's the other thing you got to do. You got to not get deeper in debt. Do this with cash money. So, you know, these people that I see that are posting all the time, like, how much money can we make off our homestead? This is our first year. It should not even be your first worry <laughs> because you should keep your job as a way to finance your homestead until you get an income coming in. So that's going to be the third tip is you need a source of income while you're homesteading. Whether, you know, if you're married and you're a couple, at least one of you should work. Maybe both of you should because that first year, you're not going to be doing anything. You're just going to be observing, right? Because we are following step one. You're just going to observe what's on your property so that you don't go and mess something up. Um, another thing was um, on the homestead, I had a bunch of dandelions that only grow in one spot of my yard. And that's where I had originally planned to put the garden. Had I put the garden there, there would not have been dandelions for me to make dandelion jelly with. Kind of the same way with red buds. Now, there's a lot of red bud trees on my property, but a lot of those trees would have got cut down because I had originally planned to put the orchard somewhere entirely different than where it was. And my original goal was to go in and cut down all the trees that was currently there and then build a new orchard in its place. And if I would have done that, I would have cut down several nut trees, several red buds, uh you know there there was just other other reasons why so that first step is the most important the second step is figuring out a way to finance your goals without going into more debt keeping a job you got to keep a job um the the way that i bought this property and have done everything that I've done. So I come here, I did the gardens, I did the rabbits, I did the chickens, I've done the bees, I've done the bee expansion, I've done over 70 fruit trees, I've done hundreds of berries. So many berries I've lost track, I don't even try to count them no more. The fruit trees are simple, I can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, on down the line until they're all counted. Berries, I've got them everywhere. I've planted berries, I don't, I've even forgot about berries. Um, but, all that stuff takes time and you might say you know it's probably going to take me about two days to build the chicken coop and it you can have bad weather and it'll take you a month and if you are really tight on your schedule then you're not going to stay within your schedule and you're going to get aggravated because things are over budget and you didn't get everything you done you wanted to do so make sure you include some downtime over a lot on the amount of time that you think it's going to take. I've, I've seriously gotten any more where if I think something's going to take eight hours, I just multiply it by 10. And that you'd be surprised how often that actually works out. So, you know, I thought it was going to take eight hours, but it ended up taking 80 and that's pretty realistic. And that's not a lack of experience. That's just dealing with things like weather and just stuff that can go wrong on, you know, on the homestead. Um, an animal gets sick. I've, I've had that happen numerous times that just totally mess up my plans for that day or the next couple of days. Um, so that's another tip. Um, what else can we talk about? Uh, getting out of debt. I, I did something. So when I started to do this, a lot of people started to tell me about Dave Ramsey and I never followed his. I never followed his, like, the way he does it. But what I found out was the way that I did it was pretty close. Um, instead of doing snowball, I did avalanche. And uh, I kind of did it on my own. And I created a spreadsheet um, to help me track my expenses and budget and what I'm spending out and my goals and all that stuff. So I got some spreadsheets I'll link to in the description if I don't forget. If you hear it in the video and it's not there, remind me. I've actually got blank ones ready to go. Can you guys hear the goats? They're like going crazy because they hear me talking. Um, they're just going to have to wait.
that's kind of like what I wanted to discuss. This is going to be a multi-part series because I can already tell I'm at 16 minutes now. And I try to keep my videos, you know, relatively low. So through editing. But there's going to be a second part to this video. This is only the first part. I have several series planned. Um, I basically just touched on the three things that I felt is super important for you to do. If you want to get into homesteading and self-sufficiency and do it without failing. Because... I'm going to be honest with you, I am now um, on my sixth year, and if all goes well, I will be 100% debt free in about between 12 and 17 months. kind of hard to tell with this coronavirus. The only thing I owe on is my house. Everything else I pay cash for, or I charge it to a card, and I pay the card off that month. So you can do it. You just have to stay focused, and you have to have a plan, and... You have to know what you want to do. That's what I really wanted to say was you have to you have to know what you want to do. You have to have a plan and you have to have some money to back it with. And as long as you have those three things, homesteading and self-sufficiency lifestyle is pretty easy to do. So stick around for the next episode of this coming up soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share my videos if you found this useful. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments.